and welcome back to my channel and you join me in Ipswich for another history walk I do love coming to Ipswich it's such a fantastic place to visit history on every corner just can't get enough history really uh, in this video I'm going to take a walk up to Cornhill and along the way I'm going to discover a haunted building and some interesting pubs but I'm starting with the building on my left. It's called Curzon Lodge. And it dates from the late 15th century. It's rather a, a magnificent building. On the side of the building is a plaque. And it reads, near this 15th century house, on the opposite side of the way, stood in 1472, the home of Robert and Joan Wolsey where the great child of honour, Thomas Wolsey, Cardinal, Archbishop and Chancellor, passed his boyhood. This is where Thomas Wolsey grew up. Now the house he grew up in is, say, is across the way. It's all been knocked down and, uh, and rebuilt on. But this fine building here on the corner of St Nicholas Street and Silent Street actually still remains. And it's a fantastic building. And the architecture inside it's just as magnificent as the outside. Back in the 16th century, it used to be an inn, but today it's a nice little shop front. It's actually a community hub. Uh, they sell a range of products in there, exhibit artwork, and it's a venue for events and meetings, and a safe and free spot to simply just hang out in the town. Had a lovely little chat with the lady who runs it, name was Daisy. Lovely lady. And, uh, they do teas and coffees and things as there as well. Really rather pleasant in there and such fantastic architecture in the inside. They have a website as well, chipcic.co.uk. I'll put the information on the screen and also in the description below. Well worth taking a look if you happen to be in Ipswich. But just up ahead is uh, St Nicholas Church. One of, the, one of the older churches here in Ipswich. St Nicholas Church dates from the 1300s. It's refitted in 1849 like so many churches around the country in the Victorian era, all refurbished. The tower dates from the 15th century and that was uh, completely rebuilt back in 1886. And inside the tower are actually uh, six bells. The first is a Miles Gray, dating from 1630. Now he was a bell founder from Colchester and regarded as one of the finest in England at that time. The other five were by um, Henry Pleasant of Sudbury, and they date from 1706. St Nicholas is no longer a, a working church. It's not open for regular worship. It closed some years ago, and the building has been repurposed. It's nice to see that these old churches have been given a new lease of life within the community. And behind me is Cromwell Square, and at the end, it's a rather interesting statue. This monument is to a sporting legend. It's to a person called uh, Prince Alexander Obolensky. He was a Russian prince who became a naturalised Briton. He was born in St Petersburg. And him and his family fled in 1917 due to the Russian Revolution. Uh, Alexander Sergeyevich Obolensky of Ruakind, Russian origin. You can trace his family history back to the year 862 in Novgorod and to, uh, to Prince Ruakin all those years back. Novgorod is um, twinned with Watford. It's only about 50 or 60 miles from here, just outside of London. But he's a sporting hero. He played rugby for England. He made his debut for England in 1936, playing the New Zealand All Blacks. And he scored two tries as well. And his second is generally regarded as the best try 
in an international record apparently that, uh, that still stands today. I'm not a rugby fan. I've just read that on the uh, on the plaque on the uh, on the monument. If you're a rugby fan and can shed some light on that, then please leave a comment in the comment section below. But he served his country. Well, he served his new country, which is England, and was a, a pilot officer in the RAF. He was tragically killed on uh, March the 29th, 1940, aged just 24 years old, when his Hawk Hurricane overshot the runway at RAF Martlesham, just a few miles outside the town centre of Ipswich. And he's rem remembered in this fantastic monument, which was erected in uh, 2009, it was unveiled. And the sculptor was a uh, Harry Gray. What a fantastic monument indeed to, uh, to somebody which the town of Ipswich has taken to be one of their own. Especially as it's reported that he, uh, he had a tryout at Portman Road, according to the plaque. Now just up ahead here is a rather interesting building. Again, it's a late um, 15th century building, but it's said to be haunted. The building dates from the late 16th century. I believe when it was built, it was a, a local inn, but now it's a, a local business. Um, downstairs is said to be haunted by a ghost called Sylvie. Apparently she likes to lock people in the toilet by blocking the door. And upstairs it's, it's haunted by the ghost of a dwarf who was said to have hung himself there I don't know if those stories are true or not, or part of local legend. No doubt some Ipswich people will tell me. They're two good stories though. <laughs> I don't fancy much being locked in the toilet, but uh, I suppose you, worse things could befall me, I suppose. But the interesting building is at the top of the street, and it's called the Falcon. First reference to the Falcon pub was in August of 1728 in relation to a shooting competition. I'm not sure if that was pistols or archery, uh, but the, the landlord in 1743 was a man called John Curtis. And he was previously the landlord of the Cock and Pie pub just around the corner. That pub was well known in Ipswich as a cockfighting pub. So did they have cockfighting here at the Falcon? Or perhaps archery was there? Um, entertainment of choice. Interesting to, to find out more on that. Uh, John Curtis died in 1744. Back in 2010, the bar was known as the Bowman's Bar and Lounge. Was this a reference to the archery competition of 1728? Or for the fact that in 1816, there were three people at the pub, part of the landlords, called Robert Bowman. I wonder, archery or a family called Bowman? There's also a building next door called the Bowman Club. I wonder if that's a reference again to the pub and to archery. But now let's head on a little further up towards the Cornhill and see what we can discover up there. Just the top of Princess Street is a rather ornate building. It's actually the building of the uh, Suffolk Building Society. It dates from 1901 and its local architect was Thomas Codman. And there's a rather nice little sign on the side which says Pars Bank. And that was they can trace their uh, lineage back to 1849. Just had a look inside. What a magnificent building into architecturally. It's all been refurbished into a very high standard. You'd expect that from a, a building of that era and also from a bank as well. But just down the end here is Elm Street. Lovely blue arch, a very ornate decorative building. And on the side is a plaque to a Jean Inglow, poet and novelist. And she lived here in 1834 to 1844. 
and her father was the manager of the bank here because this building was actually a bank. It's the Ipswich and Suffolk Banking Company. And uh, this magnificent arch dates from 1845. This is when this was put in. So the family moved out and uh, this rather ornate archway was created. And the nice seating area at the back here, well, this used to be the Ingelow's garden. It's now part of a trendy little cafe. Really rather pleasant. And now let's head on up to the, uh, the Corn Hill and discover two more interesting pubs. I'm going to turn left at the end here and walk up uh, Lion Street. This road goes round the other side of the Corn Exchange building. I haven't walked up here before. I do like exploring back streets. And there's a, at the back of the building there's a hoist or a crane used to take goods from, from street level down into the, uh, the storage underneath in the basement of the building. It's quite interesting to see that uh, still preserved on the outside. Now down this little alleyway into the, uh, the corn exchange. This is walking around the side of the, of the Golden Lion uh, Hotel, constructed around 1700 built on the site of the former White Lion Public House that dates back to our uh, 1570s. And next to that is a pub called Manning's that originates back to 1689 when Robert Manning kept the premises as a beer and wine shop. It came an inn back in 1737. And here we are outside the Corn Exchange and it's quite delightful hustle and bustle of, uh, of Ipswich Town Centre life. And a delightful little fountain as well. I actually featured the Corn Hill in a previous video when I walked through Ipswich looking at the execution sites for which the Corn Hill there was one and quite notorious as well. I hope you've enjoyed this little video don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow my journey because there are plenty more adventures to come. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.